I've been obsessed with Sermit lately, looking up how to make it and whatnot. And it's funny, it just so happens that I've been having a lot of trouble with my lathe and the high-speed steel that came with it. Either the metal I'm trying to play with is too hard, or this is crappy stuff from China. Also, I probably don't know how to sharpen it very well, but whenever I do, I get it sharpened as best I can find on online, and then it just wears away really quickly, and I can't really do very much. I have to, I have to keep sharpening it every day. And it's been really annoying, because it never, it never really seems to make a good enough finish. It's just weird, trying to cut iron with iron. Or steel with steel, at least. That's the best I could ever do. Well, then I decided to take a little peek inside of one of the subscriber packages that I've had sitting around for a very long time. I knew it came with some Sermit inserts, but I didn't realize that it came with the holders that fit on my lantern post of my 1911 Seneca Falls lathe. And look what I made. It's so amazing. It's so beautiful. And the um, with the upgrade to Sermit, it actually made these beautiful blue filings, which... I, I, I guess that maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. I don't know, but I like them because they're cool. Well, I didn't have perfect luck with them. I also tried this, and I had a hard time getting this metal working right. But, oh well. I don't know what these are, though. Just random stuff from the scrapyard. I say we can try this again. Because there was, there was a lot of junk on here, like welds and whatnot and rust, so... Who knows, maybe we should try this again now that I've done this. But I think we should open up that subscriber package and see what other goodies have been given. Because these are just so much better than these Armstrong holders. So this package is from Mr. Dalrymple and he actually sent three packages. Two of them were this size but they were very well packed and so I took all the packing out and put them into this box. So don't think that he just threw a bunch of stuff into a box. These were exceptionally well packed and I just had to break them down for space. If I recall correctly, he is a retired machinist and he's just been clearing out some of his old inventory. Now he's also sent in another package, but I figure I haven't actually opened that one, so we can see what that is another day. Ooh! Hoo -hoo! Chisels! What? Okay, I probably should open this earlier, because that's really nice. Very nice. If you've been watching for a while, you may recognize that I've already been using some of these items. For instance, I have actually used a lot. Well, I've used this quite a bit. This uh, Me Too Toyo caliper set. Because they're so nice. And it's not, it's not battery powered, so I don't have to worry about a, a stupid battery going bad or whatever. Because I've had a few of them where they just, the batteries kept going bad and I just, I couldn't stand it. So with this, I'll never have to change the battery. It's really nice, and it's nice Min Japan high quality. Definitely more than precise enough for anything I do, because, well, let's be honest. My stuff isn't too, uh, I'm not doing precision stuff. Little screwdriver set, wire snips, crimper. Some of the stuff's like brand new. Little hooks and, uh, Spludger things, whatever they're called. But again, super useful. I should probably, like some of these things will be good for the workbench and some of these things are actually be very good for the um, the lathe. So I'm probably gonna set put together a toolbox just for the lathe. Splice cap. Oh, this is the drill bits. That'll be very useful. All these little drill bits. I'll have to get these cleaned up and sharpened properly, if they haven't been already. Yeah, they need a little sharpening. And, um, made in Sheffield, England. That's cool. That's actually really cool. But those will be really handy for, especially Bill's house. 
we can use those for that, for fixing things up. But I'm gonna set aside the useful stuff and go towards the more interesting stuff. Like that, I'd say that's right in the middle. It's definitely interesting, but it's also just something that's like really useful and might easily be overlooked. The most interesting, I'd say, at least, well, not most interesting, but one of the interesting things would be a box full of end mills. And I've already used this for wood. Whenever I was cutting the end, or making uh, the hole bigger on the end of a wooden handle I made for my hand grinder. So we just have a bunch of end mills. And I've never used one of these until then. And it is so amazing to be able to cut with the side of a drill bit instead of just the end. So amazing. They have all sorts of sizes of them too. Oh, is this a big one? Oh, look at that. I'm thinking about getting a small XY table. Um, cross slide, is that the term? Cross slide? Either way, the two axis mounting plate for a drill press. Because my the drill press that I have is a really wonderful one that Thermionic Man sent me, or gave me actually, because he brought it down here. And I think that might actually be sturdy enough to do a little bit of rudimentary milling. Yeah, there's just a bunch of those in here. Enough for whatever size I may need. And it came in a Sun 386i or i386 box, which is a little bit of history right there. Almost makes me think it's from like Weird Still Warehouse or something. We have metal saw. I believe this is um. Several different sizes and thicknesses, but I believe that this this goes into like a clamp type thing, and that's the thing that you see people have them on their mill, and they can cut channels and well, cutting like keys through the end of bars and stuff like that. At least I'd use it for that, because that'd be great for cutting a place to put a key in. Oh, start! I've heard that name before. Ooh, look at that. Start number C183. Is it an inclinometer? But I imagine I could use that to set this on a flat surface. Well, not a flat surface, I guess. There's so many different uses for that. It's just an, yeah, yeah, an inclinometer. Oh, and you can tighten it down so you can save angles. So, like, if something's at a 45 degree angle or whatever, that might be more of a machining thing. But, like, for instance, I imagine. If I wanted to make sure that I had, let's say, 60 degree. Well, I'm not sure where to measure that from. Would it be there? Do I measure at the end or? Hmm. Do I measure there? Okay, I measure there. So that's 60 degrees. And I could use that to cut the side, like to know the right angle to cut the side of a hex head, I guess. That's still pretty cool. I'll have to look that up a bit. Always handy. Hey, Bondhus. I have the ones that I use that are like the rainbow color because I thought they were really cool. I remember I saw them at a lab at an apple and I just had to get some, so I ordered, ordered some. They've held up surprisingly well. Ooh, those will be handy. Little grindstones. Bunch of them, all identical. Oh, that looks cool. Okay, what am I doing here? Uh, okay, so this, that's some precision stuff. Hmm. Sadly, my Googling abilities don't seem like they're quite enough for this. But... It appears that these do use this same piece. So 
that evidently is for measuring at an angle. And tighten it down. And this one is for measuring. Let's see. Oh! Now that is innovative. Wow. So you can tighten that down. Loosen up these. And have that. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess it, I guess the part number's on there. That makes sense. But that has a lot of freedom of motion. Look at that. That's amazing. Again, I think that's probably some very high precision stuff. Thank you very much for this. this is a, you definitely didn't need to bring to, to give this to me, but I will give it all a very good home. And I might take a lot of stuff inside just so it doesn't have any humidity issues out here because I do worry about humidity. Even though I have, well, I guess it's, it's not going to be getting below freezing anytime soon. See, that's the problem. I have a, uh, a dehumidifier running all the time but it doesn't work in the cold. And so I do worry about that. Even my lathe has started to rust up just barely. By far, the most amazing thing of this entire gift would have to be the sermon, which I believe is Oh, it just says carb, so tungsten carbide. Well, I'm going to call it a sermon because it's a sermon. But yeah, the fact that these actually fit into the lantern tool post of my lathe is pretty amazing. I'll need to custom make a piece that goes underneath it. So far, I've just been putting this other piece underneath it. And then whenever I need to do the other piece, I just flip them around and do that. But I have left-handed and right-handed, which is very useful. And yeah. And now comes the train, of course. But I got... Fourteen, not bad. And of all the mescaline I've done, I don't think I've sh I've dulled these at all. They seem just as sharp as they were before. Now my chuck doesn't seem like it's straight. It never really holds stuff straight. So that's gonna be a future video replacing the chuck with a three-jaw chuck that somebody sent in. But I figure I shouldn't cover too much in one video because after all, I can only learn so fast. And right now I take it one step at a time. Just getting my first like relatively nice looking finish is just pretty big for me and then most of all oh, I've actually started using where did it go now? I've actually started using that little uh, instrument my Grasp of the English language is failing me at the moment. You know, the internet can be really awful sometimes because I cannot, for the life of me, remember what these are called. I know it's not an actual, like, what you think it would be called, but I can't find anywhere on the internet. So I'm going to look at my old videos. Dial indicator. I probably would have called it like a lineometer or something like that, not a dial indicator. It doesn't actually tell you what it is, a dial indicator. 
It doesn't say what it does. It just says what it is. You know, it just, it just says it's, it's round and it indicates. Well, that's a lot of things. So that's needing a better name. So anyway, I've started using my dial indicator, my lineometer as I'm going to call it, for centering the lathe and it's actually making things a lot quicker because, because before I would move the lathe through as close to it and do it by hand and it wasn't very fast to say the least. You see there's the problem that that's level and that's not. So I think this maybe I just don't understand how to level things in a truck. But I'm gonna move this over. Oh Did that do anything? Well, it looks better. It does look better. That's going to be a pain in the butt. Okay, that's the best I can do. I think this piece might be a bit ovalish. If I remember right, it's just some random piece of, piece of metal I almost tripped on in the scrapyard, and so I picked it up. But, I've been using this, and I've been really enjoying it. This is just like that, much below the actual center of the uh, axis of rotation. And so this can't actually fully clean off an end to a piece. In a future video, I might want to fix the slop in this because I would like it if it would be less than half of a rotation for it to engage. But like right now, if I'm feeding in too much and it starts doing something bad, I jerk it back and then it doesn't do anything. I have to jerk it again, it still doesn't do anything, and then it starts going. So it's like 1.2 times rotation before it actually starts engaging. And um, it just kind of leads to that, like, mental, that mental uh, brain fart where like, oh shit, oh nothing's happening, it's still going bad. Oh, it's still going bad. Oh, there we go. You know. And this, um, uh, it's kind of gone now, but there's a little piece of something stuck in there that made it kind of hard to move back and forth. I've been oiling it quite a bit, and so hopefully there isn't much issues with things needing oil. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it appears that Sermit likes to run at a higher speed than I thought. And since this lathe is 109 years old, it seems like the fastest setting might not be fast enough, and the belt slips a lot. I mean, if we're going to be honest. I bet I can probably stop it with my hands. Yeah, I can stop it with my hands. Like that. So that belt needs a little bit of tightening. <laughs> Although, to be honest, it's probably a good thing to, to have that when I'm starting out. Because if, if, I, if, if, if like my glove got caught in there, it would just be like, ah, oh, piece of shit. And I just pull my glove out. It wouldn't rip my hand off, which is nice. It is nice. But I might just add a little tensioner on, on the flap belt. That way, whenever I'm doing something that, that needs less safety and uh, more power, I can do that. Because the motor has plenty of power. Funny, I actually started being interested in Sermits because of Final Fantasy XIV, although that's not very unusual for me. Because in the Praetorium, which I was doing a lot, 
there is the Sermit uh, bulkhead. And so I, I looked it up, like, is Sermit an actual thing? Lo and behold, Sermit is actually ceramic metals. And tungsten carbide, if that's what this is, is a Sermit. Still sharp. That <laughs> is nasty. It looked better when it was spinning. <laughs> oh well. Um, hmm. Some of it's nice, but not all of it. Definitely an issue with every variable that is involved, except for the, the carbide. The carbide seems like it's still pretty new looking. A little bit shiny on the tip, but oh well. See, this is where I get stumped. How come it worked so well on this, but it didn't work so well on that? I don't know. Am I taking too much off, perchance? I will try slowing it down a bit just to see, so I can see what's going on. But I worry that will make it worse. I bet it might be because I'm coming at it too low. So if I can move that thing up so it's actually cutting at the center, then maybe that can help. Oh, look at that. A perfect little set of level thingamabobs. Just perfect for that. I have low hopes for this working, but oh well. is weird. It is like it's smearing the metal. What would happen if I just went into it? It started cutting. It just doesn't have enough strength on that.
those lines that are in the middle, those ones that I cut really deep. Now maybe it could actually be that I need to put some some coolant on here, some some oil. All I have on hand is some gearbox oil, but we can see if that'll work. Good enough for me. Okay, so try on fastest setting. It's not that fast compared to other people's lathes, so I think that might be a bit of a problem. But surely people have actually used it for this speed before. bits of burning metal coming at you. Uh, no, that did not work at all. So there's that result. Started out fine. A little bit. Had a few rings where it's actually kind of shiny. And then it just went to shut. <laughs> and kept staying shut. Let's try another piece of random junkyard metal. Now this one I've gotten mostly leveled, centered, whatever the term is. Well, I guess maybe not there. Yeah, good enough for me. Oh, I guess another thing could be is this angled right. I would assume that the edge of the diamond should be right on this, but I could be wrong. All right. If I got a live center, then I could put the tailstock on this, I bet. You know, that's a bit too high, so for this one I'm going to remove this little spacer Allen key that I inserted. Just doing that in case there's any little burrs on it. I thought I noticed there was a few parts looked like something grabbed it or some kind of device or something. That was weird because it was just gliding over the top. I mean, this thing's not exactly level and, or stable. And so. Yeah, I don't know. And with a loud pop, this handle just snapped. Weird. Oh, shit. All the threads just ripped out of this. Well, it looks like the threads have actually ripped off into the nut. I was wrong. I got it backwards. But the nut is still cracking too. So, 
Ah, what a piece of garbage. Okay, I kind of got it on here. Let's see if that can work. Oh. It's only going by a few marks, a few one thousandths of an inch. So it's good. I'm going to try to get that center post going or a tailstock live center thing of a bob. And I'm just making some inserts. There we go. I believe that hitting it, I actually hit it too hard and I think that probably chipped the cermet. So, now the fun of seeing if I can get this out. No. Because that is a star bit. Actually, I don't need that one because, well, let's see. I have this box of random drill bits, and I guess that would probably work. Okay, so... Belt slipping. That should do okay. May have a bit of grease or oil work. not going to work. You know, I just realized this belt actually has some, uh, some oil on it or grease or something. It's all hard and it's making it slippery. Oh wait. That's a lot smarter. Whenever I take this metal and rub it up against that for it will put this oily substance on there. Now it's not doing it so much, so I must have gotten it off. But that oil 
It's like a solid oil came off. I'm gonna try holding this against that. Oh, look at that. I can't, I can do it perfectly fine like that. So I think that I'm gonna use this as a tensioner for the belt so it doesn't slip anymore. Makes me wonder, could I use this to make the faster speeds work better? Because again, it's only due to the slipping of the belt. Let's see how I'm gonna do this. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. That's so much better. Woo. Well, look at that. That's the slow and that's the fast. Speed does make a difference. Let's try going over it again with the uh, tailstock, lightly pressing up against it. And then I'll hold that roller up against the flat belt to make sure that it's got enough power. Ooh. Yeah, these little grimy. Whatever the fuck is inside here, like it just like it crunches up. Oops. <laughs> you didn't see that. This entire thing just needs to be cleaned up, you know. I remember right, WD-40 has a pretty low melting temperature, so mayhap that can work for uh, like a coolant type thing. Actual oil will be better than uh, WD-40. Maybe it's not that you want to keep it cool. Maybe it's that you actually need lubricant. So let's try this again. That smells like pretty bad sulfur. Maybe that tailstock just wasn't in enough. Well, that's enough putzing around for today. I would like some input on this. So that was before, that's really terrible. 
then that was um, with the tailstock. That was with uh, higher speed. Like, we well, you know I went over all of it. Never mind. So that was lower speed. That was higher speed. And then going in really deep. Going in uh, with WD 40 did terrible. And then going in with um, really thick oil. Yeah, so that's that. Hey, this is the. Um, the end to this because I, I was thinking because like normally this didn't come off something changed and that came out okay well then well anyway um I, I I'm able to do the things that I want to do. It's just I can't get the finish quite right. Like, if I want to make a, a washer smaller, I, I've i had no issue with doing that. But, it would be nice to make things look nice. And it would be nice to understand why does this look nice and the other things don't look nice. And I'm messing with mystery metal here. Just random stuff at the scrapyard. Although I guess I could get some like hardness files and see how hard they are. But I don't know how tungsten carbide would handle like tool steel. What if I just put a drill bit in there and tried carving the drill bit? Would it crack the the cement or would it? I don't know. I might give it a try. I imagine hardened to steel would not machine very well and probably just chip and crack, uh, crack and fracture because that's what robots tend to do. But yeah. Huh. I forgot to film a suitable ending to this video and I simply don't have time to go back out to the workshop because I'm too busy with the Ishgardian restoration in Final Fantasy XIV. I've been spending so much time on it that I've actually ended up on the Sky Builder Rankings Board. Slot number 61. I feel pretty good about that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya!